indeed. The White House is now scrambling to clarify President Biden's comments on Ukraine. Watch this. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, et cetera. But if they actually do what they're capable of doing with the force of mass on the border, it is going to be a disaster for Russia if they further engage, invade Ukraine. I'm not so sure he has uh, is certain what he's going to do. My guess is he will move in. He has to do something. All right. Uh, as of now, Ukraine's foreign minister is responding to the president's comments. So I'm going to read you the statement. Speaking of minor and full incursions or full invasion, you cannot be half aggressive. You're either aggressive or you're not aggressive. We should not give Putin the slightest chance to play with quasi-aggression or small incursion operations. This aggression was there since 2014. This is the fact. Congressman Greg Stubbe, Republican from Florida, joins me now. Congressman, to me, it sounded like the president gave the OK to Russia for a minor incursion. What say you? Yeah, he absolutely did. And you know it's bad when the White House, after the president is giving a press conference and makes a comment specifically on an issue, has to scurry around behind him and issue a press release saying, oh, no, no, what the president really meant to say is there's going to be ramifications for anything that is done to the Ukraine if the Russia does move in. So you know it's bad when their own White House is having to clean up after the president does a press conference on a specific issue. And and, and the president says, oh, Putin's got to do something. Why does he have to do anything? anything. Uh, it, it shows that he's completely incompetent. He's not coming from a position of strength. And I would argue he's created the situation that we currently are in. If he wouldn't have removed the sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which gave billions of dollars to Russia, I don't think we'd be in the circumstance that we're in right now. You have to be strong. You have to have a strong leadership. And when they've, they've lifted the sanction on Nord Stream 2, that gave billions of dollars to Russia. And the next thing you know, they're building up on the Ukrainian border. Overall, what did you make of the president's performance yesterday afternoon? Well, respectfully, it was a, a unmitigated disaster. Uh, he, he didn't talk about the important issues. Unfortunately, we only have one conservative reporter in the room that only gets to ask one question and everything else uh, was kind of just nipping around the edges. You didn't hear anything about Afghanistan. The fact that we still have citizens of our country and people that worked with us in Afghanistan, you, you, had, you didn't hear anything about that. You didn't hear about the border crisis where we've had over right. 1.7 million illegal immigrants cross our country, more than the population of some of our states. You didn't hear anything about that. You didn't hear anything about crime. You didn't hear that, that homicides have reached the highest level that they've been just during Biden's presidency than they've been in decades. So there was a lot of big issues that are facing our country that he just glossed over. And, and it's, you know, it's really bad also when the Democrats and the Democratic pundits are saying, oh, he talked for more than two hours, yeah. more than any president's ever had a press conference. If that's the only positive thing that they can talk about us. How long Biden spoke, you know it's not good for the Democrats. Well, I did think that was a positive in that he got through two full hours. That's a record-breaking performance. And he didn't really lose his train of thought or lack of focus at any point. I'll give him that as a one success. Will you join me in saying that was his one success? <laughs> well, I don't think that most of what he's done has been a success. But Just if you want to give him thing. credit for standing up there for two hours and rambling on about things that didn't make any sense, then, <laughs> then I'll give it to him. Thank you very much indeed, Congressman. I'm glad we're in agreement at the end of the interview. Sir, we will see you again. Great to have you on the yeah, show. Yeah, good to see you. Yes, sir.